Hello, I'm Mrs. Hawkins, and I want to introduce four-level analysis to you today. The most important thing that we need to know is that grammar is just a way that we can discuss our language. And four-level analysis is perfect for that because uh, it helps us to get the vocabulary, helps us to understand the essence of thought, and uh, a sentence is a paradigm of grammar. We can go through all four levels and understand every element of grammar just by going through one sentence. So uh, before we get started, I just want to show you what the four levels are. We have parts of speech, parts of sentence, phrases, and clauses. Now parts of speech, some of the biggest problems that we have in, in studying and teaching grammar is that a lot of people just want to teach the parts of speech and stop there. But that doesn't do us any good. We actually have to look at the second, third, and fourth levels in order to understand our writing, our thought, and how to punctuate. So in order to understand four-level analysis, I want to give you a sentence that has all eight parts of speech. And this sentence is, whew, after an hour's work, we had finally pulled all of the weeds and cleaned the small garden. Let's go through the very first level and identify all the parts of speech. So this first word, whew, you can tell, doesn't really have any grammatical purpose. It is just a statement of emotion, and we know then it has to be an interjection. Okay. Um, the rest of the sentence, now this is where the essence of thought really begins. So first we have to look at after. After can function as a couple different things, but in this sentence we look at what, what it is connecting after an hour's work. We don't have a subject or a predicate in there, so the only thing that this can be is a preposition. And we know it's a preposition because a preposition connects a noun or a pronoun to the rest of the, or another part of the sentence. And so that's what, exactly what it's doing right now. It is connecting work to the rest of the sentence. And is an article. Articles are special kind of adjectives. They're little noun alerts. It's telling us the noun is coming. Now, hours. This can be kind of confusing. We have an apostrophe there. What it's doing is showing possession. So instead of our being a noun here, it is actually an adjective because it is modifying what kind of work, an hour's work. Work is a noun. Sometimes work can be a verb, but in this case it is a noun. So you have to, that gets kind of tricky too. You always have to see how it's functioning in the sentence before you can identify the part of speech. We is a pronoun. Pronouns are finite sets. The, we have the first person, second person, third person pronouns. It can be singular or plural. This is a first person plural pronoun, we. Had is a verb. Sometimes had can stand by itself, but in this case it is actually helping another verb. So we're going to call this a helping verb. And then we have finally. Finally has an ly. Not always, but most of the time ly can be an adverb or will be an adverb. Um, and then we have pulled. Here's our other verb. That's what had is helping. It is helping pulled. So we call this our main verb. And so together, had pulled is acting like an action verb. Okay? And then we have all. Lots of kids will forget that all is a pronoun. It is an indefinite Pronoun. Sometimes we know what it's referring to, sometimes we don't. In this case, we know what it is referring to. It is substituting for weeds. So this is, that's what pronouns do. They substitute for nouns. Of is a preposition. It's one of those words that will always be a preposition. The is an article, another one of the special kind of adjectives, a little noun alert. And weeds is a noun. And is a conjunction. And it is a special kind of conjunction called a coordinating conjunction. And cleaned is another verb. And notice that if we go back to this sentence, to back in the sentence, we have had is also helping cleaned. Because we can say we had finally pulled all the weeds and we had cleaned the small garden. So it is helping not only pulled, but it's also helping cleaned. And so this is also a main verb, and this one is also action. The, once again, is an article. Special kind of adjective. It's 
telling us that a noun is coming. And then small is an adjective. We know it's an adjective because it is modifying garden, which is a noun. Okay, so now we have labeled all the eight parts of speech. Okay, we have noun, we have a pronoun, we have adjectives, we have um, verbs, adverbs, prepositions, conjunctions, and interjections. All of them are represented here in this sentence. Now, if we stop there, we haven't really learned anything about the essence of thought. The next step is crucial, because the next step is a part of sentence. <laughs> next step is a part of sentence. Um, and the, the most important part of the sentence is the subject predicate set. That tells us what we're talking about and what, the, what we're talking about, what it's doing. And that is the essence of thought, two-part structure, subject, predicate. And in order to find that, the only two t parts of speech that can be a subject, first of all, is a pronoun or a noun. And so we have to look through our list, where are our pronouns and our nouns. If we look here, the first noun that we find is work. That can't be our subject, because that is, how, is working with this preposition, after an hour's work. That right there is a phrase, and we'll get to that when we get to the third level. So the next thing we have is we. We here is the subject because it is telling us wh what the main part of the sentence is. Who did what? We is the subject. And what did we do? We had finally pulled. So that's one part of our predicate. And the thing is you need to know the predicate is always the verb. It can't be anything else. So because we have blocked had finally pulled off, finally is an adverb, that can't be part of our predicate. So we have to take out finally. And this is how I show that. That finally is not part of the predicate, the simple predicate. And then we have to look again through the rest of the sentence. Do we see any other verbs? We do cleaned. So cleaned has to be a predicate. And then we look back, because it is sharing this helping verb, what we actually have here is we have a compound predicate. So we're not done yet, though, at this sentence level. Because when we have a subject predicate set, we have to find out what the rest of the sentence is doing or saying. And when we have an action verb, we have a certain course of action. If we had a linking verb, it would be another course. But this time, because we have an action verb, we have to ask ourselves, we had finally pulled what? And the answer to that question is all of the weeds. And the, what, what, what that is answering then is the direct object. We have a verb that is transferring energy to, to a noun or a pronoun. And what we are transferring energy to is all. So this is our direct object. A lot of people will be tempted to say that weeds is our direct object, but we can't find our direct object in a prepositional phrase. And that's what we have up there, and we'll get to that at the third level as well. Okay, and then we go to the other part of the sentence. We had finally cleaned the small garden. Once again, we have we have finally cleaned what? And in this case, we have another direct object, garden. So cleaned transferred energy to garden. And so not only do we have action verbs here, when we, they transfer energy to a direct object, what we have is something called a transitive verb because it's transferring energy. This one's transferring to all, and this one's transferring to garden. Okay, so that now we are done at the sentence level. We have our essence of thought, the subject predicate set, and what it's transferring energy to. Okay, now at the phrase level, this is where we look for our prepositional phrases, we will look for something called verbal phrases, and we will look for something called appositive phrases. In this sentence, we have just the basic prepositional phrase. Everyone's kind of familiar with that. So if we look at where the first preposition is, it's after. So this is a prepositional phrase. And then we have to, every prepositional phrase has to have an object. If the preposition doesn't have an object, then it's probably not a preposition. So the only thing that can be the object is work. It has to be a noun or a pronoun. Okay, so we have, after an hour's work is one prepositional phrase. If we continue on, it can't be our subject or a predicate for any other phrases because that won't, that won't qualify as a, as a phrase. And then we look here and we have another preposition. So, of the weeds is another prepositional phrase. And weeds is our object. Okay, 
So that's it at the phrase level. We have two prepositional phrases. The other thing that we have to look for with the prepositional phrases is we have to de decide what they are functioning as. And prepositional phrases will be modifiers, so they'll either be an adjective or an adverb. So after an hour's work, it is telling us when they finally pulled. So this is an adverb because it is modifying a verb. And then uh, pulled all of the weeds. So all is the pronoun, and of the weeds is telling us more about all. So this one is an adjective prepositional phrase because it's modifying a pronoun. Okay, and then our fourth level is clauses. So this is how we determine how many clauses we have, how many subject predicate sets we have. Now we have a subject, and we have a predicate here and a predicate here, but they share this subject. So because it's a predicate, a compound predicate, we only have one subject predicate set. So when we have one subject predicate set and it makes sense, the only thing we have here is one independent clause. And when we find out that we have just one independent clause, phrases, how many phrases we have, that doesn't matter, it's all attached to the clauses. We, um, we decide what type of sentence we have, which is simple. And the purpose that we have is declarative. It is just declaring something. The last thing to discuss is the purpose of this interjection who. Okay, we don't want to um, give it any other grammatical function because it doesn't. Interjections are just the purposes to show emotion, and that's all this is. So all we have here is one independent clause, simple declarative. It has all the parts of speech, shows us our subject predicate set. We have one, we have two prepositional phrases, and our clauses are done. So now we have language to discuss language. If I needed to correct any part of the sentence now, I would know the vocabulary well enough to correct anything that I needed to correct. So I hope that helps you understand four level analysis better. Thank you. The next step is crucial, because the next step is a part of sentence. <laughs> next step is a part of sentence. <laughs> Thank you for watching, maybe. Thank you for watching.